anywhere from two and a half, three thousand, it really works. So the 52s in the mid range is phenomenal. And let's be honest, right? Where do you drive your car most of the time? In the mid range. Right now I'm driving. This is three thousand, not even three thousand shift, two and a half grand shift, two and a half grand shift, and the car just gets going. It's easy. It's smooth. It's got plenty of torque. Though I do feel that maybe sizing the throttles up to 54s, maybe going a little bit extreme on 56s would give a better response through the mid-range and a better top end. Though I do have friends that have stock K24s, like when I say stock, it is take it out, put it in, and they dropped a set of I think it was 62s or 67s. Um, the car made good power, but I'm assuming the power, a lot of the power was at the top. So five and a half upwards, you'll get peak power. Uh, I think you might suffer below the five and a half grand mark. I'll be cruising in my lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely. I'll be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sicy. One thing I must say is, like I don't know if you can really hear me, but the noise from the ITVs, it's, for normal people, it's a lot. I love it. I can wind up the window and show you what it sounds like. It's a lot better now, you can actually hear me, right? Is throttle bodies too loud? Is there such a thing as too loud? A lot of guys in the group say that the throttle body is just way too loud to actually live with on a daily basis. I really don't think so. I feel that the throttle body allows you to actually engage more with your car and hear everything that the car is doing. I'll wind up the window right now just so you can hear what it sounds like. This is what it's like inside the car with the window up. It's so much like better if you want to call it that or more livable you can drive this on a daily basis it's easy it's not that loud you get a nice purr from the exhaust you get a little bit of rumble from the front of the car if you open the throttles you get a lot of rumble from the front of the car but it's such a an experience and a lot of you guys out there will be like why would you even waste money on throttle bodies you could have just turbo the car for the same price and you would have had double the horsepower. You are not wrong. You are 100% correct. Though, what I feel happens when you turbo a Honda, like a Honda like this, is you lose the sensation of that high revving Honda feel. Yes, it will still rev high, turbocharged. I'm not disputing that. But you lose the feel, you lose the orchestra. Like when you're going through the gears, it's just an experience. Do you want to go through the gears? Oh. Yeah, and it just revs and shift the gear and it revs and the orchestra coming through the 
symphony the motor makes it creates it like it rumbles through your soul it vibrates your soul it makes your soul come alive and uh, right now there are some cops on the side of the road should I show you guys so let's try behave ourselves just a little bit right do you think they'll mind anyways so one thing you must note about this car is it is at altitude we are 2,000 meters above sea level so it's not as fast as you guys down at the coast This is my 2005 Honda Integra DC5 Type R. It has Bridgestone 225s up front. It has Dunlop 215s at the rear. As you can see, the fitment is just right. It doesn't rub, it doesn't scrape. Everything is on point. Well, I think it's on point. This is probably my favorite car in my arsenal. Not the fastest, but the most fun. This is the car that I will choose to drive all the time over everything else okay a little bit of the basics we've got two motormax seats fia approved imported from the uk the car currently is in south africa momo monte carlo steering wheel tagiwa short shifter it's got a stock clutch and flywheel from the k20 type r well the k20a uh, it has a ultra racing room bar ultra racing c pillar bar ultra racing rear bar it has got some nice trick things underneath sway bars it's got a lot of nice things in it now i know i know i know you want to get to the money part what's underneath the hood well let's find out so here's a question i got a question for you guys right the honda boys out there and the boys that are not honda boys the ITB boys do you think I should cut a hole in the hood and direct air straight into the ITBs because I think that will give like a couple of free horsepowers you know fresh air is always good because now it's just sucking in a lot of hot air that's under the hood let me know man under the hood we've got a K24 A3 sub assembly which in America they call it the K24A2 it's the same thing this is just the JDM variant I'm pretty sure it's a JDM variant that's the one we got locally it came in the Cord Type S but that's all that's from there is the crank and the block it has Nippon Racing 12.5 compression ratio pistons yeah they're not forged they are semi forged or they are cast piston but they operate really well it has scat I-beam rods ARPs all around uh, it's running a stock Honda head gasket it has a K20A from the Type R head with skunk tuna 2 stage 2 cams or they maybe they're called skunk stage 2 tuna cams or skunk tuna stage 2 cams um, skunk valve train and retainers it has a ported and flowed head and as you can see I've had to machine quite a bit of the power steering to fit the ITBs and I had to machine this as you can see one rib less here to get the ITBs to fit in the back here 
we've just got a basic tri-wire header four to two to one i know a lot of you guys will say that the megaphone four into one header will work a lot better yes it probably will zss coilovers and that's basically what it is underneath the hood um, and that's how it makes its ponies it doesn't make the most amount of ponies but like i said i might be after a set of dc 3.2 cams because they're a lot more aggressive and they give a wider power band and a, a higher top power number but i don't know that for a fact i've been trying to do some research so if you know anything about that please drop a comment below which cam i should go with for more than what i got or the skunk ultras but i heard the skunk ultras are very hard on the chains so if you could help me with that that would be greatly appreciated it has been an absolute pleasure having you guys on the channel watching this video with me i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i enjoyed driving the car if you have any information on the cams please drop a comment below or if you want to know anything about the car or the build and you enjoyed what you saw maybe i can advise you on something but till then you know what to do like share subscribe peace I miss the body catcher slaughter gang soul snatcher ain't no regular f-150 this a fucking rapper yeah. no capper street nigga not a rapper chopper hit him and he turned into a booty clapper